Soil Carbon Challenge is framed as a competition to recognize land managers for turning atmospheric carbon into water holding, fertility enhancing soil organic matter. I started in the desert in Arizona where it kind of became clear to me that community health and economics and land health, it's all one thing. And I remember having a thought one day that was, uh, where did all the organic matter in this soil go? Because I was sitting on a bunch of sand. We're doing this, you know, we're doing our testing today. We were out uh, for two and a half hours out there uh, doing the carbon testing, going through the carbon challenge, um, the soil carbon challenge. And so we'll have, we'll know our depth, we'll know uh, you know, a lot of witnesses here um, <laughs> out there doing this and so we're gonna see how what we're able to do um, over the next you know 10 years and as you may know soil organic matter is over half carbon by dry weight and it is a tremendous reserve of carbon with many times the mass of carbon in this in our soils worldwide than we have in the atmosphere and that we have in vegetation. It's a vicious circle here. The more carbon and water we have in the air, the less carbon and water we have in the soil. And by water in the soil, I'm talking about soil moisture, not groundwater. Soil, as you may know, holds many times the water of the atmosphere and all vegetation and all rivers. Soil, soil water, capillary plant available water is many times the volume of all the water in the atmosphere, all the water in the rivers, all the water in trees and plants. The less water and carbon in the soil, the less plants they'll be able to grow. The more rapid oxidation of, of soil organic matter occurs, the more carbon and water we have in the atmosphere. The more carbon and water we have in the atmosphere, the less in soils, and it's a vicious circle. I think the solution to this vicious circle, if you will, is to get more carbon into the soil. Because water will follow. Okay, we're taking a core sample here. And this will be tested for carbon at the lab. I'm, I'm taking samples 0 to 10 centimeter, 25 to 40, and we're aggregating those samples for one single test. These samples will be sieved, ground, and subsampled, and then a small part of this composite sample will be then tested with an elemental analyzer. This is rocky soil. I'll take a, I'll try to simulate a core sample with the spoon, taking even representations from all the layers um, to zero to zero to ten centimeters. The biosphere just doesn't sit there looking pretty. It does work, and this is the opportunity. This work runs the carbon cycle. Fossil fuels, again, um, important and critical as it may be to reduce our consumption of fossil fuels, it's the work of the biosphere that is our big ally in enhancing the carbon cycle. And that's why the Soil Carbon Challenge is focused on helping creative, innovative, committed land managers monitor their progress towards soil health, water holding capacity, and productive fer fertile soils by measuring carbon. The future of Vermont depends on having lots of carbon in our soil. Our economics depends on it. The way that our watersheds function depends on it. Our security in the face of weather extremes depends on it, like big dumps of rain and whatnot. And if we can keep thinking outward, I think it's really good to think at the farm or the watershed scale, but we can keep thinking outward to the atmosphere and we can, you know, change the future prospects vis-a-vis -vis climate change. I mean, we could the math actually indicates that a small increase in soil carbon on worldwide ag and grazing land can take the extra 
atmospheric carbon and pull it into the soil. That's a pretty positive thing. And I, I, I don't even think about it. It's so normal to me. I know that we can reverse global warming, so to speak, and that we can clean our water, and that we can reverse desertification, and that we can grow food without lots of pesticides, fertilizer, herbicides. We can manufacture all those things right out of the air. We don't do it. The plants and the microbes do it, but we can let it happen through our management. So I'm very hopeful, and I think it means a lot to Vermont on a real practical level, that our future is directly tied to how much carbon is in our soils and figuring out how to turn air through plants and microbes into soil organic matter is the big job in front of us. One of the posters for our um, soil carbon challenge shows an elephant with all the major problems, environmental problems, listed as uh, parts of the elephant or puzzle pieces or cuts of meat if you want to say. Climate change, food quality extinctions, floods, food security, economies and communities, droughts, desertification, invasive species, scarcity conflicts, pollution, one could go on and on and on. But the question we're trying to ask is what are the incentives for dividing an opportunity, in other words the opportunity to enhance the carbon cycle, into multiple competing problems? And we find a lot of agencies and some organizations even doing a lot of boundary maintenance between these problems. This is my problem. We have soil problems over here. This is the Department of Water problems. This is the Department of Community problems. It's really all a carbon cycle, folks. So, and you don't have to be part of this fragmentation. We, c we can move toward managing for what we want and need instead of against what we don't want. So that's the opportunity of the Soil Carbon Challenge.